my scalp is so tight right now because I just did this style like not too long ago. I still gotta brush the sides, but all right, welcome back to the channel. We 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 gonna skip past the intro. I mean, you, you saw the intro, but you know we about to get into. You you know by the title, it's time for WrestleMania Night Two. Now before I really get into this, there are some adjustments that I did make to the card just because we had some let's say conflict. So of course, if you haven't learned by now, I guess I'll share the news with you. Bad Bunny more than likely is not gonna be at Night One because he has a concert on Night One specifically. I think it's April six. However, April seventh he is free, kind of. I have a little bit of jet lag, but you know, just work on a quick match. You know, he ain't, he ain't got he ain't got to do that much. So basically, I'm putting Bad Bunny and Logan Paul's match tonight too, as well as interjecting L A Knight into that match. You have the mega star with the other two stars, and then they boost him up for the United States Championship. And of course, you gotta have L A Knight taking the W. I mean, it's time for him to get a title. If it's not going to be one of the world titles, it's time for him to get some type of title. And in this case, the United States Championship, that makes logical sense. Now, before I go a little bit more in depth into what I'm going to do as far as night two and the adjustments for night one, I need you to understand. Yes, I'm trying to incorporate the superstars that y'all love and that I enjoy watching as well. But I'm incorporating things from a fantasy booking perspective, a realism perspective, and a business perspective. Now, let's be logical here. WWE, this, I want this to be a realistic card, a card that is suitable and it satisfies people at the end of the day. Now, of course, you're going to have your oddballs, but even in that case, it has to be a card that when you look at it, it's like, okay, it evens out. You have some heels winning, some faces winning, but at the end of the day, it's great all around, and new storylines can develop post-WrestleMania. And even continuing with that, when you really think about it, WWE is a business. They're a business first. You got to think globally. You gotta think what works, what's best for business, isn't that what they say? You know what I'm gonna do about it? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tweet my displeasure. That's right, I'm gonna jump on social media and I'm gonna tweet about it until my fingers bleed. I might even send an Instagram or a Vine. <laughs> That's right, and on that tweet, in that tweet, and however many characters I get, I am gonna threaten. That's right, if I don't get what I want, I'm gonna riot. And, and if that doesn't work, then by God, me and my friend Mark, we're gonna stop watching. Come on now, come on now. Now, I'm not too sure if I put this in the other video, but in terms of Randy versus Solo, I want that to be an Extreme Rules or a No Holds Barred match, in which, yes, Randy would still be the winner in this case, but just really wanted to clarify that that would definitely be the stipulation in that match. Now, the match that I moved to Night 1 and replaced with Night 2 is for the other mid-card title, the Intercontinental Championship. Now, for that, I have Gunther taking on Karrion Cross in a Hell in a Cell match. And I get where you're coming from. Gunther had a wonderful reign, a long reign. But Karrion, this is, for all intents and purposes, kind of like his last shot, you know? Not last shot, but it's like, if this group with the final test, like, if that doesn't work out, bro, I'm gonna be real with you. I don't know what's gonna work. You know what I'm saying? So why not give that group a boost? Don't have AOP compete for titles right now. Let them build themselves up, you know? But in the meantime, like carry on win the Intercontinental Championship. Or maybe AOP is actually there from ringside. You know, when Imperium tried to interfere with the match, then the AOP comes out, or vice versa. However you want to book it, that could definitely get them on the card as well. As far as like a brief appearance, why not? And another change in terms of Dom and JD versus Awesome Truth, because that technically did happen on Raw, it shouldn't happen again under a regular match circumstance. I'll probably put like a little stipulation, like maybe um. I mean, you already did a loser release judgment day with R-Truth and um, JD. But I want JD and Dom to hold on to the Raw Tag Team titles. Because I feel like you could do a judgment day storyline where it's like, oh, Finn and Priest don't have them, but JD and Dom do. You know, you can really explore. You can expand off of that. So, I mean, with Awesome Truth, I don't know, man. You just got to put like a little stipulation in the match. I'm not too sure what you would put, but put a little bit of a stipulation in the match. Now, getting a little bit deeper into Night 2. We have, and this, hey, shout out to Jaden, uh, Fire Phoenix, hey, shout out to Jaden because he did help me out with this one. So we have Bianca Belair, 
Jade Cargill, the debut of Jade Cargill at WrestleMania. So Bianca, Jade Cargill, and was it, hear me out, Cardi B versus Chelsea Green, Natalia, and either Tamina or Sonya Deville. Now Jaden suggested Tamina or Sonya because Sonya is still recovering from the knee injury, so not too sure she's going to be back by that time. You know, if she's not, then we can maybe interject Tamina or maybe I mean you got Ivy not. Uh, but Ivy's not really a heel, is she? Who's the upcoming? Well, no, Jade. Cora Jade is injured. Um, probably just interject another heel, another female heel. You know, you can't do like Shana Baszler or Zoe Stark because once again, they're in a tag team, so you can't do that. Really gotta think about that one. Really gotta think about that. One. Jade Cargo making her debut, as well as Cardi B making her in ring debut. You know, you don't have to have her in there for a while. You don't. Cardi B could get some hits on them. You, you know, like. Not as bad as it was when we had Snooki, you know, not as bad as that. But, you know, like a couple of hits, you know, give her a little bit of training. Never, It doesn't hurt, you know, like a like a quick spot, a quick spot. The next match, Tornado Tag, Finn Balor, Damian Priest versus the Almighty Prophets. The Almighty Prophets, they're going by the pride now. I mean, that's okay. It's all right, man. I mean, the Almighty Prophets was obviously a better name. It's it's a, it's a better name, bro. I don't I don't know what to tell you. It's a better name. But with that being stated, with the Almighty Prop, with the Pride, with the Pride um being a new group and really needing that boost. I mean, I gotta say the Pride has to win, and then walk up to the stage and celebrate with Bobby Lashley when Bobby does that. That uh uh duh, yeah we we need that we need that. And when it comes to Jade, Bianca, and Cardi, obviously they should take the W in this case, you know what I mean? You got a good worker in Natalia who, in my opinion, Natalia is underrated. She is completely underrated. The best female worker on the roster right now. Alright? In terms of technical, she's the greatest female wrestler on the roster right now. That's all, that's all, that's all I'm saying. Ladder match. Now, because you know WrestleMania typically has these. So, the ladder match I have booked is Nia Jackson, Becky Lynch. Versus the Kabuki Warriors, versus Kaden and Casey, versus the return of Lay Cool. Now, Lay Cool was probably the first females I were actually I was actually introduced to when I first started watching wrestling. So, for them to make another like to make a return, can we see Michelle McCool? She can. She may not be able. I'm not sure if she can go for like a full on like 30 minute match. You know, but she could definitely do a quick 15, 20, and then with a ladder match of multiple people, she could take some time to rest on the outside in case, you know, forbid that she gets the wind knocked out of her or anything like that. She could take a rest outside for like a minute or two while the other females battle in the ring. That works out. Layla, I haven't seen in a ring in a long time. Did she retire? I'm not too sure if she may have retired. But in this case, same thing with Michelle. Um... Just gotta, hey, just take take a breather out on the outside. That's it, take a breather. And so for this match, I do have the team of Nia Jax and Becky Lynch winning. Honestly, it's controversial, but I feel like when you have the like the bitter rivals, can they coexist? You know, that, that storyline. I feel like Nia Jax and Becky Lynch are such an odd pairing, but at the same time, they both would kind of make like a really dominant team. And it would be pretty interesting. It would be pretty interesting. It's kind of like a like a team hell no with Kane and Daniel Ryan. Oh, let me cook. Let me, let me cook. You know what? Get me off the stove. Get me off the stove. I didn't, I didn't. Hold on, man. Now, the final match after that matchup, I have Rhea Ripley versus Trish Stratus for the Women's Heavyweight Championship. I think they're calling it that, right? So, for that match, we had a long run. She had a wonderful run. But I have Trish winning that match. I just, I just do. I have Trish winning that match. I feel like Trish is probably the greatest female wrestler of all time. I think you can honestly say that. You can bring up the past like Fabulous Moolah, Mae Young, and those are also great mentions. But I feel like as of right now, man, when you look at everything Trish has done, and then just everything that she's, like, I'm not even just talking like championships. I'm talking about like the impact that she's had. Yeah, you gotta go. I feel like I feel like Trish is the greatest female wrestler of all time. And then the following match. Now I cook. I cook with this. So I cook with chicken. After it. Jimmy versus Jay. We know that has to happen at WrestleMania. However, it will be a tribal combat match with Rikishi as the referee. Cause you know Rikishi been teasing his involvement in the whole entire storyline for a minute. Put him in. 
put him in WrestleMania, let him be the referee. Boom, be like, I gotta straighten my sons out, gotta make sure this, yeah, yeah, whatever. That. Hey, let him be the referee. It's a perfect addition. And now, in terms of who wins this match, honestly, I don't think that either brother, because they're twin brothers, but I don't feel like either one of them should beat the other one. I don't. I don't. I feel like Solo should interfere and take out both of them. And then the match ends in a no contest because neither one of them are able to compete. And then after the match ends, Rikishi stops Solo because Solo about to go on a rampage destroying his brothers. And then Rikishi just stares down Solo and then I don't know, he says something like, you're better than this or something like that. And then they just have a stare down and then Solo just walks off. And then it's time for the main event of night two. Roman Reigns, the tribal chief head of the table, Mr. Acknowledge Me himself versus the man who must finish his story. The man who is Dusty Rhodes' son. Dusty Rhodes is his dad. Mr. Woe himself, Cody Rhodes. Now, when you really think about this match, nobody's there to interfere. Jimmy and Jay, they're done. They couldn't, they, they, they in the back getting treatment. Solo, he walked off, nobody could find him. They said Solo left the arena. After his, after his encounter with Rikishi. So now Roman's all alone except for Paul Heyman. And even at that, he, it's not enough. It's not enough. Brandy Rhodes is accompanying Cody Rhodes down to ringside to make sure nothing pops off with, with Paul Heyman. Paul can't throw that championship in the ring, none of that. Cody, Cody Cutter, crossroads, one, two, three, ding, ding, ding. The WrestleMania ends with Cody Rhodes on top. Just a little bonus for y'all. Just a little bonus for y'all. For the Raw after WrestleMania, I have Matt Cardona returning and attacking Otis and Chad Gable with Maxine. While, while, while Maxine's having a match with Chelsea Green. So, that's a little something that I cooked up. You know, nothing, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. So, you know, just take that into consideration. I'll just be cooking like that. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't like to brag too much. But, with that being said, let me know how you rate my WrestleMania night one. And night two car I cook. You know, you know I did. You know I did. Come on now. Come on now. But until the next time, till the next rhyme, till the next event, here's a new present. I give you the gift. Make it make it, um candles for a wish. Hey, give me ooh, a kid. Uh let me start, let me start. I'ma catch on the next one. Y'all, y'all, peace out, peace out, man. peace out. Baby girl lost awesome. it ain't capping the slightest She take out to just be like a Midas When we walk in the room, we the brightest Different topics, but I'm steady vibing In the mud, but I better stay striving With the family, I'll always be thriving Creepy sets, but I cannot quit climbing Know your circle